Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon every one of us. Ameen. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, and every single one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us goodness. We're talking about supplications from revelation, and we're coming to the end of this entire series. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the end of it the most powerful of it because... These are days of calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's important for us to realize the biggest thing that we could ever achieve is the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, when she asks the Prophet, peace be upon him, O Messenger, do you see if I were to witness the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr, what exactly should I say? And he says, say, Allahumma innaka afuun. Tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. O Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive, so forgive me. That's the best dua you and I could make today and every day. So we say, Allahumma, ka, Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive every one of us and grant us Jannatul Firdaus. If we achieve forgiveness, we can forget about everything else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with, with that forgiveness. I want to move on to another beautiful narration that is reported in Sunan Abi Dawood and uh, also in Sunan al Nasa'i, related by the Prophet. Wasallam. He used to call out with this beautiful dua. And this dua is connected to asking Allah for a good death. We all would love to uh, have a good death and we all would like to get, you know, uh, to a place where it is better than where we are right now. But the transition needs to be good. The way we end this life also needs to be good. It's called husnul khatima, uh, the goodness of the end. So if a person dies, for example, in salah, it's called husnul khatima. They were fortunate. If a person dies in hajj, <coughs> the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is husnul khatima. All these are considered uh, good uh, ways of uh, the life having ended. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, a good ending. Amin. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hadmi. It's a long dua, I'm just starting it. O oh Allah, I seek your protection from destruction, you know, hadm that which is destroyed. I seek your protection from destruction. And I seek your protection from falling from a very high place. Subhanallah. Dying as a result of a fall. You know, you fall from a very high place and you go down uh, and you die as that as a result. So uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, is seeking protection from taraddi. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْغَرَقِ And I seek your protection from being drowned, from drowning. وَالْحَرَقِ And from being burnt. And I seek your protection from الْهَرَمِ Harami means that old age where I'm totally now dependent on everybody else. They get fed up of me and so on and so forth. You know, when you get old, mashallah, it's good to be old and fit and to be independent. The minute you start depending on people and that is your life, it's better that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you away. So this dua is saying, oh Allah, protect me from that type of old age. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ أَنْ يَتَخَبَّطَنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ عِنْدَ الْمَوْتِ And I seek your protection from the devil confusing me or taking control of me at the point of my death. Now I pause for a moment. At the point of death, it's not so easy. It's quite difficult because your life is going. You know, there is a lot of anxiety in the case of those whose belief is not so strong. But we believe we should be so happy and convinced 
that we are going to a better place. But sometimes if you're weak, shaitan comes to you at that moment and makes you utter words of disbelief. He makes you say things and do things that are disgraceful. This is a dua seeking the protection in Allah from shaitan who may come at the time of death to confuse and to take control of an individual. What a powerful dua. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ أَنْ يَتَخَبَّطَنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ عِنْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ أَنْ أَمُوتَ فِي سَبِيلِكَ مُدْبِرًا And O oh Allah, I seek protection from being killed in your cause while I'm running away. Subhanallah. Which means your path, your obedience, but I'm actually heading the wrong way. I'm on the path. But I just turned around and I'm going back and now I lose my life and you take my life away somehow in whatever way it happened. And oh Allah, I don't want you to be displeased with me. So that is uh, dying while running away from the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ أَنْ أَمُوتَ الَّدِيغًا And oh Allah, I seek protection in you from dying as a result of being bitten or stung by something poisonous, etc. So this is a powerful dua. You see, it's connected to a good death. We're seeking a good death from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me read the entire dua. So in case we would like to repeat it or say it with me, inshallah, we've heard the meaning of it. It's asking Allah's protection from destruction, from falling from a high place and dying as a result, from drowning, you know, death caused by drowning, death caused by being burnt, death caused by old age or at such an old age where we are totally dependent upon others. I seek your protection from shaitan coming to me at the time of death and confusing me. And I seek your protection from dying while I'm turning away from your obedience and your path and dying uh, having been bitten by an animal or an insect or whatever, uh, you know, a reptile uh, and so on. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hadmi. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ التَّرَدِّي وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْغَرَقِ وَالْحَرَقِ وَالْهَرَمِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ أَنْ يَتَخَبَّطَنِي الشَّيْطَانُ عِنْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ أَنْ أَمُوتَ فِي سَبِيلِكَ مُدْبِرًا وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ أَنْ أَمُوتَ لَدِيغًا What a powerful, beautiful narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here. It's actually amazing how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's words are so, so powerful. We benefit from them. We should be using them to call out to Allah. And I'm very, very thankful to Allah for giving us the opportunity to go through these words one by one. Even if there is a little bit of repetition sometimes, I promise you that repetition is beneficial for us. We don't know which is the moment of acceptance of dua. So therefore, call out to Allah today, tomorrow and every day. If you have a need, there is no harm in repeating the need. In fact, there is benefit in repeating it as many times as you want. So when you want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be serious about the question. Be serious about that supplication. Call out to Allah. Seek His forgiveness. Praise Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Send blessings and salutations upon him. Uh, you know, uh, seek the forgiveness of Allah and then call out to Allah in such a beautiful way. And remember to end your dua also with seeking uh, or with sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I move on to another narration which is muttafaqun alayh. Muttafaqun alayh. It means it is an agreed upon narration, powerful narration. I think the majority of us would know this dua off by heart, but some of us don't know its meaning. Why would we know it off by heart? Well, this dua that I'm about to read right now is repeated by most of us in salah and in prayer. Right at the end, just before we say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, that is the moment of supplicating and calling out to Allah. While you are sitting in the last, what is known as qa'da, just before you are going to say the salam, is the moment to call out to Allah. I did make mention in one of the episodes of Rabbana Atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an nar. It's one of the supplications that you could use at that particular point. But there is a more common, the most common supplication at that juncture is Allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi zulman kathira wa la yaghfiru dhunuba illa anta faghfir li maghfiratan min indika وَرْحَمْنِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ O oh Allah, I have wronged myself in a great way. 
O oh Allah, I have wronged myself in a great way. O oh Allah, I have sinned in a big way. O oh Allah, I have oppressed myself in a great way. And there is none who will forgive sins besides you. So therefore, forgive me a forgiveness from you. And have mercy on me, for indeed you are the most forgiving, most merciful. Wow. Every time we are completing our prayer, just before we say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah on either side, we are seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, I've wronged myself in a big way. No, nobody is going to forgive me besides you. There is no one who can forgive besides you. So therefore, forgive me from you. And have mercy on me, for indeed you are the most forgiving, most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon every single one of us and grant us goodness in this world and the next. My brothers and sisters, that is a lovely dua. Whenever you use it in the salah, and you have to be anyway, uh, you know, one of those duas, like I said, this is the most popular dua. It's a sunnah, it is authentic, it is muttafaqun alayh, and we should be using it. But whenever you use that dua or say it, Try and think of its meaning because some people, we are so used to the salah, we just say the dua, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, and we don't even know exactly what we have said. I want to move on to another dua that is also amazing. Many of us complain about uh, not having a good house. Sometimes, you know, we're looking for another house. It's never big enough. It's never spacious enough. Uh, and so on. Many of us complain about wealth and money. You know, we don't have enough. So there is a sunnah dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is narrated in Sunan al-Tirmidhi as well as uh, Musnad al-Imam Ahmad. The hadith is mentioning this dua. Allahumma ghfir li dhambi wa wassi' li fi dari wa barik li fi rizqi. I love this dua. It's amazing. O oh Allah, forgive my sin. O oh Allah, forgive my sin. Allahumma ghfir li dhambi. O oh Allah, forgive my sin. Wa wasi' li fi dari. And grant me a spaciousness in my home. That means grant me contentment, make my home such that I am happy in it. The house and the home, both of them, which means the living as well as those I live with and the conditions I'm living in. Make, make me content, make me happy, make it broad enough, make it spacious enough so that I, I, I'm not looking for something else when I'm in my home. It's sufficient for me. وَبَارِكْلِي فِي رِزْقِي And grant me blessings in my wealth. Now, if we think about the blessings in the wealth, we will come to realize that these blessings are not necessarily an amount but rather, uh, what happens with the amount that we have. So when I say, oh Allah, bless me in my wealth, it doesn't mean, oh Allah, give me more and more and more and more, but oh Allah, let there be baraka, you know, blessings to the degree that whatever I have is more than enough, sufficient for me. And I have, I still have excess. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing because a person who has a thousand dollars a week, for example, which is quite a good salary, a person who has a thousand dollars a week in a first world country, Right? If their expenses are such that they cannot make ends meet and that's not enough for them, then they become people who might have a big figure, but they're, they're never content and there is no blessing in it. In a short space of time, it's over, it's finished. But a person who might have less in figures, but yet when they buy, they find that, mashallah, they have changed, they have a lot of money that is still remaining with them, they're happy, they're smiling, that is called baraka. That is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings in wealth, we are actually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to give us uh, the goodness of being able to spend uh, in, the most, uh, in, in the most beneficial way. We've got the bargains, we've got the good deals, and we're happy. The quality of the product is really good. You know, if you buy a product and there's no blessing in it, it could be expensive, but it will be damaged in one day, broken in the same day. But if sometimes you might buy a product that's a little bit cheaper, and who knows, it could last for you for 10, 20 years. That is barakah. That's the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is also a very, very good dua. Uh, I want to repeat it. Allahumma ghfir li dhambi wa wasi' li fi dari wa barik, wa barik li fi rizqi. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the, the barakah and the blessings 
of this and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really open our doors. My brothers and sisters, these are uh, very, very amazing uh, words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many times we look at these words and we think to ourselves, how did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this Prophet of Allah, how did he think up all of this? Uh, how did he make a dua for these things? But like I say, it's a miracle, it's revelation, it's divine. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So definitely it is something that Allah has kept for us to benefit from rather than the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needing it. Uh, I want to move on to yet another dua. The dua the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes mention of. Uh, it is also a dua in Sunan Abi Dawood and Sunan An Nasa'i. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-faqri. It's connected to the previous one. Remember, we ended that dua by seeking baraka in our sustenance, blessings in our sustenance. This is another dua. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from poverty. Protect me from poverty. Walqillati. And from having very little. So I'm not poor, but I've got very little. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from poverty and from having very little. Walqillati. And from being disgraced. Oh Allah, protect me from disgrace. And I seek your protection from myself oppressing someone, doing wrong to someone, or anyone doing wrong to me. Beautiful. So that's the dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al faqri wal qillati wa dhillati wa a'udhu bika min an adlima aw udlama. O oh Allah, I seek your protection from poverty, from having very little, from disgrace, and I seek your protection from me wronging someone, doing something wrong to someone, oppressing someone, or someone else doing wrong to me. It's amazing how both of those are mentioned at the end. Many times people say, Oh Allah, protect me from being oppressed. But think about it, you might just be an oppressor yourself. Oh Allah, protect me from others they, when, when they wrong me. But who, what about you? Are you wronging people? Are you doing things that are wrong to the people? If that is the case, then definitely you need to correct yourself and you need to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is also a beautiful dua uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want to move on to yet another dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he speaks about knowledge. And knowledge, we know we've asked uh, uh, for it uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we've spoken about it in previous episodes uh, where we've said, Rabbi zidni ilma and so on. And oh Allah, grant me beneficial knowledge, increase me in knowledge, benefit me from the knowledge you've given me. But there is a level beyond just knowledge. And that is a deep understanding. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua for him. Allahumma faq Oh Allah, grant him a deep understanding within religion. It's called fiqh. Faqihu. It's not just alimhu. Faqihu means give him a deep understanding. When we say ilm, we're talking of knowledge. When we're talking of faqih, it's actually a deep understanding. That's why the Prophet says, Man yuridillahu bihi khayran, yufaqihu fi deen. The meaning of it is, whomsoever Allah wants goodness from, He grants him a deep understanding of the religion, not just a shallow understanding, a deep understanding of the rules, the regulations, the application, the way to guide people filled with wisdom, etc., etc. All that is called fiqh. Would you like to have that for yourself? The answer is yes. Well, if that is the case, then there is a dua that you may make. Now this dua is obviously derived from a dua of the Prophet ﷺ for Abdullah ibn Abbas. So it's not like the Prophet ﷺ told us all to make the dua. But in this case, it is mentioned in the hadith that I said, uh, in the hadith that I, that I said earlier. Uh, it is in Sahih al-Bukhari actually. But it's about a dua that the Prophet ﷺ made for Abdullah ibn Abbas. Anhum, and we would like to get from it. So we're extracting our own dua from that dua. Allahumma faqihni fi deen. Allahumma faqihni fi deen. Oh Allah, grant me a deep understanding of the deen. 
Allahumma faqihni fi deen Oh Allah, grant me a deep understanding of the deen. So that is a short dua. It is concise. Where did we get it from? We derived it from a dua made by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. Obviously, in that case, the dua was accepted. It was made by the Prophet ﷺ. It was given to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. He became known as one of the top scholars of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He was young at the time and he was a great, great scholar, mufassir. He understood uh, the, the tafsir. The Prophet ﷺ also told him, uh, also made a dua for him. Allimhu ta'wil. Oh Allah, grant him knowledge of the interpretation of the Quran. And he definitely did have that. Many times we see the opinion of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma in matters of tafsir and in the translation of the Quran. So this is uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa dua. When we make it, we're just asking Allah, oh Allah, grant me a deep understanding. But please, my brothers and sisters, make an effort to learn the deen. <clears throat> Don't just ask Allah, oh Allah, grant me a deep understanding of the deen. But your life is somewhere else completely. The way you are leading your life is something totally opposite to what you are asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is an, a, another absolutely amazing and beautiful dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we see. Then I want to move on to uh, another beautiful dua. You see, when we drink zamzam, the Zamzam that we drink, whether we're in Mecca or whether the Zamzam has been taken anywhere else and we happen to be drinking it in the comfort of our own homes or fortunate enough to have it outside of Mecca to Al-Mukarrama, uh, sometimes there is a, a dua that we say uh, that would ask Allah increase in knowledge, uh, increase in a few things, uh, increase in wealth, increase in... Uh, good deeds. So this is a similar dua and it is a dua mentioned in Sunan Ibn Majah in Kitab al-Salah and even in Sunan al-Nasai. Uh, in fact, in uh, Sunan al-Kubra, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalam mutaqabbala. Three things that are being asked for in this hadith. O oh Allah, I seek beneficial knowledge. I seek from you beneficial knowledge. Rizqan tayyiban means uh, sustenance that is pure. Sustenance that is pure. And the third thing is amalan mutaqabbalan, deeds that are accepted. Now, it's important for us to see what we're asking for. Here the Prophet ﷺ, the first part of it is quite simple. We are asking for beneficial knowledge. I told you an effort is required to... Uh, you know, to pursue that knowledge, but Allah will make it beneficial by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the second thing is we're asking for pure sustenance. Pure sustenance is your income needs to be halal, it needs to be pure, it needs to be good. As time passes, it's becoming more and more difficult to earn in a halal way. So for us to be able to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us or to grant us that, not, that uh, sustenance that is pure, we would need to make a little bit of an effort. That effort is important. Pure wealth, we did not usurp it, we didn't steal it. If we're business people, if we're employed, we try and make sure that it's proper and we try and make sure that the job is also a good job. May Allah make it easy for all those who have jobs they're not satisfied with to get jobs that they will be satisfied with, uh, inshallah. Uh, amin, amin, amin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. And the third thing that we're asking for here is amalan mutaqabbalan. O oh Allah, grant us the ability to do deeds that will be acceptable to you. You accept the deeds. You know, for a deed to be acceptable, you need two main qualities. One is sincerity solely for the sake of Allah. And two is an act of worship needs to be done as per the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. I cannot do acts of worship just on my own. Decide that, right, I want to worship Allah by twitching my eye or by doing something, you know, strange. It has to be something taught by the Prophet ﷺ. Inshallah, we meet again with the next episode. Until then, I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.